All right, this is Friday Bible study. Very late, very sorry. It's Friday at 11.57 p.m. But um, it's been a long day. We'll get through this. Therefore, Daniel went unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained, to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto you, but he, but this is the way they spoke, unto the king the interpretation, even though he's talking to the king. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? So God's already put it in the king's heart to sort of receive this. Remember, God's ordained everything. He's ordained the end from the beginning. Everything is set. Even though the Bible is written throughout so much of it as cause and effect. Especially the Old Testament, especially the parables, especially the seven letters of the seven churches. It's written with a slant of free will. And then you get to the other Bible verses that completely trump every one of the free will type narratives every one of them so there's that so the king answered and said to daniel whose name was belshazzar oh good okay. daniel answered in the presence of the king and said the secret which the king have demanded Cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king? In other words, all those new agers can't show you this. Only I can because it's God that gave me the ability to do it, which is exactly what I tell everybody every time I have any type of truth whatsoever. And people thank me and we know, love your Bible studies or we love this video. And I'm like, anything that I've done good, God did it. Anything that's lousy, that's my flesh. That's, that's where the Lord allowed me to falter. Preordained at the foundation of the world. But there is a God in heaven, Daniel says, verse 28, that reveal of secrets and make known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the later days. How does God know that? Thought everything was random. <laughs> it's because he's already ordained everything. That's why. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. We're only going to get a two sentence verse. Let's got a colon. And we'll, you know, it's a cliffhanger. Hopefully it keeps you coming back, right? As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. So what he's saying is, is the dreams that you had are coming in the future and that God that is revealing these secrets to you of what shall come to pass. So let's go look at it in the new living. How many verses are on this one? 49. 
That's for the O King. My thoughts came into my mind. Oh, I'm still on King James. Thy mind, excuse me. See, my, when I open a new one, it's defaulted to, you only choose one, and mine's defaulted to King James. While your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. He who reveals the secrets has shown you what is going to happen. But he forgot him. He, so Daniel's going to give him, give it all back to him. Let's go to Luke. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven. Okay, this was about the, the parable of the one lost sheep, wasn't it? Joy in heaven that one sinner repents more than over the 99 just persons which need no repentance. Is that in real time? I wonder if the day the Lord called me or showed me the truth was there joy in heaven. And you would understand that, yes, even though God did it, there's joy in it. If the Lord didn't like what he was doing, he wouldn't do it. He could have played um, 29 dimensional chess. He could have created something that could have battled him uh, in some sort of game. This is what God likes to do. This is what pleased him. So there's joy in real time. But he's ordained it. We won't be able to understand the mind of God until we are with him. We still won't know his complete mind. But we will be as one with him as you possibly could. We won't have any power over him, but we will know, we will understand th things that we can't even fathom now. We will understand them. Either what woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, does she not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she finds it? Jesus said, I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who were what? That he knew at the foundation of the world. That's what grace is. And we've looked up elect and elected. Uh, the definitions plenty of times. And it says with God's free will that he chose certain people at the foundation of the world um, it talks about this is how you become a Christian. You don't free will your way into anything. It's impossible. You're dead. You can't raise yourself from the dead. Remember when Jesus, I told you every single one of his healing, no matter what it was, the bread, the wine, raising people from the dead, uh, Allowing the hear to hear, I mean, the deaf to hear, the blind to see, every bit of that was a euphemism for him coming to the lost sheep and bringing them back. Every one of them. Or else they wouldn't be in there. Those stories would not be in there. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. 
Likewise, I say unto you that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Can you repent on your own? Absolutely not. The sheep hear his voice. Let me give you an example. There was a guy named Saul. He was present at Stephen's stoning. Saul was basically a bounty hunter. He was hunting down the Christians and took part in their death. Did Saul somehow just wake up one day and I don't know, is that in one of the, is that in Acts of the Apostles that Saul woke up one day and said, man, this is just some bad stuff. What if these people are telling the truth? I think they are telling the truth. It sounds, sounds pretty good what they're saying. I think I get it now. No. He was going about being dead in his sins until Jesus called him on the road to Damascus. That was an exact story of what happens to every single one of us. One will come after me that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. If Jesus doesn't come into your life and baptize you with the Holy Spirit and puts you through the fiery trials that forces you to repent, brings you through that repentant process for, for whom he did foreknow when at the foundation of the world, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be firstborn among many brethren. This is uh, Romans 8, 29 and 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate when at the foundation of the world, them he also called. Who's he calling? Lost sheep. And those that he called, he also justifies. That's bringing you through the fiery trials, the sanctification process, justification, sanctification. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. That's when you get your glorified body. Or the inner man has the Christ in him. That's a form of glory also in your present state. This is if you're a sheep. I don't even know if I'm a sheep, 100%. I got a real good feeling that I am because I feel like he has shown. But you know what? Everybody thinks they've got the truth. Every Mormon, every Jehovah Witness, every Church of Christ. I don't mean the, the bad guys that run these organizations knowing that they're lying to people. I'm not talking about them like a priest or the Catholic. No, the priests the priest know it's a scam or most of them do. The cardinals surely know it's a scam, and the Pope's laughing. <laughs> you want to talk about Luciferians, you're talking about the Vatican. And boy, do we ever expose that on my other channel. But anyway, taking all of that in that context, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. That's in real time. That's when God is doing what pleases him. There is joy. Just like there will be joy in us. I've had people say, well, I'm not a robot. <laughs> okay. I would argue, neither am I. I'm a sheep who was lost and becomes found. Still human, not a robot, bleed blood. And he said, a certain man had two sons. Remember, these are, these are parables he keeps throwing out now. That's not a parable talking about joy likewise i say unto you that there is joy no that's not a parable i 
A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Oh, excuse me, sorry. Father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me. He divided them and, and them his living. Guy wanted them then. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country. I think this is the um, prodigal son. But not many days after, the younger guy goes, okay, he took his journey to a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent it all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks of the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. Let's new living it. So this parable of the lost son. He began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him. The man sent him into the field to feed the pigs. The young man became hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. I didn't pick up on that. So that's why I wanted to look at this. But no one gave him anything. So we'll pick up on this tomorrow on Saturday. Love you all very much.